Hello, my name is Lindsay Wilcott, and uh, in this video, we're going to have a look at uh, changing the background color of a web page. Okay, this is, as you can see, OBS Studio. I'll go to Notepad++, and this is a just a simple page I'm, start, I'm starting off with. Okay, I'll just delete the um, part we'll type together, if you'd like to follow. Okay, so this this setting here, um, just for information, if you go to settings, style configurator, and this is the um, plastic code wrap theme. So as you can see in Notepad, you have all the different types of theme, different color themes. And just so you can see the uh, writing a bit more clearly, I'll mark it as a plastic, sorry, I'll find that again. Um, Plastic code wrap. That's a fairly clear, clear one. I'll make sure I don't kick out this uh, microphone cord as I did last night uh, <laughs> doing a stream. All right, and I'll make the font size about 16, so it's easy to read. Okay, so I start off with a very simple um, HTML code. I've got the um, doc type HTML head is here uh, nothing in the header at the moment we could put a title just to title the page we just can't call it the same as this simple background save that you can see when we uh, refresh it there'll be a title um, I'll launch that in Notepad. So you can see up here, there's a title up there now, and a header of the page as well. So I go back to Notepad plus plus. Simple background. Okay, so first of all, as you saw, it's white, and we're going to change that to a coloured background. So that the uh, simplest way to do that, do that would be in the body tag with an inline style. Well, it may not be the simplest, but one of the simplest. Okay, so in the body, we'll do inline CSS style, which is done by typing the word style, and then equals, in quotes, background. You can have either background or background color, American spelling, color, and then colon, and then your color. Okay, so we'll save that. Launch it in Firefox or whichever browser you want to use. And you can see there that we've got a red background. Okay, if you want to look at um, other names, well, found some pretty cool sites on that before but yeah names of colors just type in Google names of colors um, to use in CSS okay so this one here is quite good um, colors.commutercreative.com I found that quite useful this one has 147 named colors on this site Okay, so you can choose a color here. It's a uh, you know I thought they'd have colors like apricot. There's no apricot. There's a uh, yeah, but there is some fairly um, unusual names. Okay, we've got dark salmon. Do we have salmon? Let's check if we have salmon. You'd think if they've got salmon, they'd have dark salmon. Yeah, there's salmon. <laughs> All right, so let's type in. Salmon or rosy brown, um, slate blue, the slate grey, teal. All right, just have another color, rosy brown. Save that. Run in the Firefox. There's rosy brown. All right, so that's a simple background and. If you want to put like a 
background in certain parts of the page. All right, I've done that in this page here. Um, in this page here, so I've I've got different shades of well, I've said grey, but there's other colours as well. Different. Um, Call it maybe background in divs, background color of divs, of elements even, elements. Okay, so here we've changed, uh, we've got a div, ID, I've, I've just, um, well, IDs are meant to be unique, so I've really just made the, um, IDs up here to be colors, which is not really ideal. Um, if you want to have an ID, it's meant to be a unique for that element. So um, if it's just a color, you might as well put it in a class because then you can um, name a class that color. So to do it as a class, you just go dot. And um, so for example, if I want to make it a dot, blue one, you just um, put in the curly brackets, you can put a height, and then the background color, make it blue with a semicolon, oh yeah, remember the semicolons, okay, so this is a class blue one, so So make another like a div and class assigned to blue blue one blue div. Okay, so you can do it with uh, colors with IDs or classes. Um, but you want to just check on the the rules for which one. Just check on the rules for naming classes and and IDs. Classes might be better if you're just using it for colors. But if you're just playing around, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, but try and follow the, the protocols is best. Okay, let's have a look at the um, the page. All right, so background color elements. So we've got Lighter shade of grey, dark shade of grey, blue div, beige, and even grey. All right, so I got those colours from that this page as well. Most of those colours, and so I've just named them. This one, the ID slate. That's light slate grey, blue one. We just did another slate. Is a dark slate grey. This one I've called beige one. It's just beige. So you just named it and cut the colors and put them in the divs. Okay, and see how we've. Um, so, for example, I just said dark shade of grey. I could even name it the actual color dark slate grey. Um, light slate grey. This one's dark slate grey. Okay. So that just pops in that div. Okay. If you want to change the uh, font within those divs. All right. So. Let's make a, a class for, um, maybe call it middle, well, font, font one, or font one, just font one, <laughs> something simple. Font one, in curly brackets for CSS. Okay, there we go. Lighter shade of grey. That's pretty. Good. That's much better. Lighter shade of grey. 
And if I want to select like that one and that one, the point of doing these classes is you can just go, so that's dot point font one, copy this class and put it in, for example, the blue one and the gray one, dim one. Save that. And we've got, oh, blue one didn't work. What have I down there? Blue. Class equals font one. Class equals font one. Blue div. Oh, because there's two classes, I see. There we go. All right, class assigned to blue one. How about font one as well? Can I put that in there? That is the question. Cascading classes. I mean, there we go. That worked. Kind of. <laughs> what have I done? The blue's gone. Okay. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. More than one class with the one div. Let's check that. More than one class for the same div. Divs can have more than one class, and with some bootstrap, you need to have more class. How to do it though? Class, div class, active, drop down, toggle. Okay, so there's no comma. No comma. Let me try that. There we go. A little comma got in the way there. So I've only done it to the first, middle, and last one. And Although this is kind of going beyond the uh, title of this video, um, yeah, that just helps with the CSS styling of the page. Okay, so that's that's basically it for that. Um, simple background divs. You can assign it to. You can assign these classes to, um, for example, blue one class blue one. Just have a paragraph class assigned to blue one, blue one, sorry. And is it blue one with a one or a O? It's just blue one with O and E. Okay, and put some text in there. Let's check this one. Right down the bottom should be a blue paragraph. There you go. It's a blue class paragraph. Okay. And you can see that the height does make a difference there. Um, blue one height 100 pixels. I just change it to 50 pixels. And you'll see that how that changes as well. Yep. So. I want to um, assign the width of a uh, class. Five hundred pixels, and you can see that all the blue class divs have gone down. Alrighty. It's just some simple modifying of divs for you. Okay, now next thing I was going to go to, that's, so that was a basic um, background color. And then we went into some aligning uh, colors, I mean, assigning the colors of elements of the page a background color. And I mean, if you recall it 
in CSS you can say background or background color doesn't make any difference I've noted so yeah I'm not sure why I guess it's just to um, help people out a bit so the same with spelling I've noticed on this page um, here this one here sorry it's simple they've got slate gray I've also got slate gray it's EY this is AY it's EY so yeah a lot of the colors they they've uh, spelt twice uh, to cater for the uh, you know UK spelling and the American spelling Australians usually use the UK spelling so we spell color C O L O U R gray G R now I'm confused <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's E Y yeah it's E Y Americans A Y I'm pretty sure so yeah it's not that many other differences in spelling but just those few there's the gray um, Maybe it's just grey, I think it is, that have a difference in spelling. Bisque. <laughs> Pretty cool. Antique white. Looks like pink to me. Okay. Azure. What is the difference between Alice uh, Azure? Is that like a blue or a white? I can't really. Some of them are a little bit hard to tell the differences. Bisque and blanched almond. They look pretty similar. Corn silk looks quite a white colour. All right, so you can have some fun with some colours there. Okay, on to the next one. Close off some of these windows. Simple background. Okay, on to the next one. So this one is JavaScript buttons. Okay, so for this one. I've made a simple, so I've put some script in the head and with three different functions. Change color, change color, change color two and change color three. Alrighty, so I'll just show you what it does first. So here I've got some buttons, click on the red, change it to red and it also changes the text color as well. Blue, teal, yellow and white. Okay, next one, input your color. So you put in, for example, bisque, white background and your choice of text color. So it's a bit hard to read that one because it's similar to white, but <laughs> there's bisque there. What was the other one we looked at was um, dark, slate, gray. EY for me. There we go. Back and colors white, text colors gray. Now this third one here, we change the background color and the text color. All right, so background color, for example, <coughs> for example, black and text color almond. That's not almond, is it? <laughs> Let me check. Do they even have almond in here? No. So I don't know where that came from. So they mustn't have named all the colors. So it looks like, oh, there's a blanched almond. Okay, so there's obviously a few colors that come across too um, that haven't been named there. Um, back to the web page. So almond, how about um, rose? Rose, that doesn't look like rose to me. Um, pink. Yep, there you go. Um, blue. Blue on black. So that's just a simple one to change the, just dynamically change the colors using JavaScript. And I'll show you the code here. The first one, where we've uh, just pressed a button. What it does is we'll go down to the where the buttons are. I'll just um, separate them 
So there's three different ones. Okay, that's the first one. So I've just got one, two, three, four, five buttons for the different colors, red, blue, teal, yellow, and white. So of this um, function, change color, takes in two variables, two colors. And the buttons at the moment, they just show the background color. But it doesn't actually say the foreground color of the, of the text. It could say that as well, but it doesn't need to. I'll, I'll, I'll just change the um, button for teal. Teal magenta, I think it is. So if I change that to teal magenta. We could put the foreground color as well. Teal magenta. Okay. So in order to change the color of the background on click, so we use this on click event handler. So, so within the button, um, within the button tag, I mean you could put on click on something else such as um, a paragraph. So I'll make another paragraph here. Say click here, click here to change the color. And I'm going to put in a function. Put up just the red, the red white one. On click. There you go. Put that within the paragraph. Paragraph on click. Change color red white. So what it does, goes up to this change color function, takes in the two colors, one of titled the variable BG, the other of titled the variable FG, which stands for background and foreground. So then on the, um, we're using the DOM, DOM model, doc, document object model. So the document.body.style.backgroundcolor, this is the way JavaScript script writes background color. Um, assigned to the BG, which is the color you pass through the first variable. And then also down the page where I've, where I've written, I've named an ID here. Um, where is that? Back, oh, there it is, down the bottom. So we've got background color is, in a span we've got the ID answer. And down here, what, within another span, we've got an ID sample. So this part here changes the result for answer and sample to the background and foreground colors. And, and then here, changes all the text in the whole body of the, the page to the foreground color. Document.body.text assigned to foreground. Okay, so let's have a look at that page again. So this part here is where we've got the variable answer. This part here is the, the variable sample. I mean, where we've modified sample. Blue, yellow. Okay. And you can see it's a bit cluttered now because I took out that line break. So I'll put that line break in. Back in here. In a couple more line breaks. It looks a bit less cluttered now. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so this is where I've changed the. Um, this is that paragraph I put in. Click here to change the color. Okay. And that's the one where I've just put it the same as that first button red, white here and click on this paragraph here. Um, to make it a bit clearer, um, 
Now on this paragraph, click here to change the color. Put in like some brackets, make it look a bit more like a button perhaps. We could even um, put the functions within spans. So you could have like red, red, white, and blue. The girls love you. So we'll go span, span here, red, span here, uh, white. I'm going to span this one blue. blue. All right, and make it a bit more readable. Change, pick a color. Pick a color. Okay, span. So this one we're going to use um, Sorry, getting dizzy. Okay, red. So pass in the red one. So on click, change color red. Put that in the span here. On click, change color red, white. Okay. Next one is um, white. So this is the so on click, change color white blue. Put that in the span next to the white, and then we have blue. So up here we've got button. On click, change color white blue. All right. So I'll just copy that one. that span and let's see how that goes pick a color red white and blue okay red white and blue whoop blue's not working okay what did I do wrong there um, on click Span on click, change color, white. Oh, we use the same one, haven't I? Didn't use a blue one. Blue, yellow, I just changed those colors there. Blue and I um, don't have to see yellow, I can make it black, it's fine. Blue, black. Um, so if I click on this one, it should be blue, black. White, red, red white and blue okay so um pick a color red, red, red. it's not that readable click here to change the color so yeah so to make that a bit more readable you could even put um yeah, a color of the actual on the around the actual span so span style sign two background of the actual span background is red Then for the oh, for the white one, I'll just put them on separate lines so it's a bit more readable. White. Okay. The white one. Style background is white. And span style background is blue all right there we 
There we go. Red, white, and blue. <coughs> There's a little space there, isn't there, between white and blue. What is that from? Red, white, blue. I think it's because there's a space there. Take that out. And go back to this one. Refresh. Refresh. What? Hmm. Still there. Hmm. Interesting. Red. Oh, <laughs> that doesn't look very good. The white, um, white and blue. <laughs> okay, red. Can't see the white word, and blue. Can't see that either. That's good. That's okay. Um, red, white, blue. I like it. And hmm. Teal, yellow, and white. Cool. Um, anyway, that's a bit of fun with colors using JavaScript. And next, what's so uh, anyway? That's the first function. Okay, the second function is not much different. All we've done is um, instead of bringing in two variables, we only bring in one variable which is the background color. And down here, say pick a color. Oh, no, no, not that one. This one here. Um, text type, input type text. So it's input. That's where we input the uh, text. Type is text. ID is my text. Input your color. On click, change color to the next function. And we pass in the color white. White background, you choose the color. So I've al already got the background for this function here. Background. Um, you can see here. White background, your choice of color. Pink. That didn't work. Green. Okay, something's wrong. <laughs> what about um? Oh, I think I found it up. Okay, so for some reason, this span is missing the end span tag. So, S-P-A-N, that's it. So it was just thinking everything else here on the page is within that span for some reason. And so it wasn't allowing the input to work. Obviously you can't have inputs within a span. So I'll uh, run that again. Hi. So input your color. This should work now. So green, white background, and your choice of text color. All right. Text color's changed to green. Teal. OK, that's how that works. So we're down here in this section after the alert using the input um, value. So that's where you put the color. Input your color. And so when you click this button, white background and your choice of text color. White background, choice of text color. When you click that, it goes up to the function, change color to. And it does all those things. It changes the background color. The answer and sample name is updated, which is these words here. And then the foreground text color is changed to the put the uh, the uh, my text dot value, which is the value of the input called my text down here input ID my text so 
foreground value is changed to the my text value, and then the documents um, um, sample section is na named the foreground color, which is from the value, and then again text is changed to the foreground color. And then the, using the same idea, idea as change color two, go change color three doesn't take in any um, any variables itself. It's just when you click on it, it says it's got two inputs, um, background color and foreground color, and then you click it and it changes. So here, the background color, foreground color, and you change it as I did before. And change color three, so it's two variables, Background color is assigned to the mytext2.value, foreground color is mytext3.value. Down here, that's where I've named the inputs, mytext2 and mytext3. And and then the um, whole background color of the bodies changed to the background color. San the answer and sample has been up updated, and then the fo foreground color is changed to the foreground color. Okay, so that's some JavaScript fun for you. And lastly, um, there's the uh, gradients. So as you can see on this page, we've got all these fun things you can do with the gradients. So gradient backgrounds, this one's rainbow, as you can see, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and this one's showing how you can, it goes from yellow to red, and this one's, I guess, green to yellow. And to do that, um, go to this line here, so background image. So for the, for the rainbow one, top one there, it's a linear gradient to right. So if you don't have to right there, the default is values top to bottom. So you need to have the direction and then at least two colors for a gradient to have any major effect. If you just put the one color, it's not going to change. So have the direction and then at least two colors. You can have multiple colors. Okay. Um, and this part here, this line here, is just for browsers that don't support the gradients, uh, like Internet Explorer 9, 9 earlier. Um, so it's the default is red. Height, 75 pixels. That's the height of this area here. And so the other gradient was just uh, going from, so red, yellow, but this one, because it's got red down the bottom there, that's two top. If I change it to bottom, that's the default anyway. It'll be red on the top and goes to the bottom. Alrighty. So background image, linear gradient. Even take off that, just leave red yellow, and you'll have the same thing basically, because that's the default. Red to yellow. I'm going to change the colors here, um, blue to yellow, we'll have a blue to yellow gradient already. Um, and if you want that left to right, the start there, just write to right. to yellow. Alright, third one I've done here was just um, to bottom right, green and yellow, so to the bottom right. So it's kind of like a starts at the top left, goes to the bottom right. Slightly different there. A bit different than the left right, as you can see there. Okay, so there's different directions you can use. 
can even use like an angle, a degrees. So if you put um, like 10 DEG for degrees, let's see what that looks like. Okay, so it's the the gradient middle midway is not quite the center. It's like curved a little bit. Like instead of being top to bottom, it's well, it's it's got a certain change in the in the angle. All right, so you can set it as degrees. One degree. Hmm. So it's almost still the same as top to bottom. Slightly, slightly changed. Okay. Oh, there I am. Hopefully you can hear me still. Yep, I can. Alrighty. Um, so that's just some introduction to gradients that's a spacer class I put in there just to um, now where did I use that on I'm on the wrong one aren't I no I'm not okay so that's just the same page basically at the top kept the buttons at the top there as before and then the gradient background is this part here. So I've just done divs, um, a spacer, just to separate them. So this spacer, um, just defines how much space is between the divs there. And so I've got gradient 2 and gradient 3. And where did I put gradient one? Gradient one is here at the top. So that should be included in there as well, shouldn't it? Gradient background. Okay, text color is yellow. Right, so I need to separate that. Just got a couple of line breaks in. There you go, creating backgrounds. Okay. Um, that word there. <laughs> okay. Um, do, 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 do. This is just, I was testing the degrees there before, so I put in that uh, background, create background degrees and left to right. So, yeah, they're the basic directions. Um, and then but multiple colors okay so hopefully that'll give you some something to play with um, using the gradients final gradient I did here on this page it's just a, a simple radiant background so I've got I put a ID gradient one and a class silver Silver one, color black, text to line center, font size 25. Okay, so I'll change that to silver. Can I have a dark silver? I don't think there is a dark silver color, is there? Check that. No. 
just silver, but silver is probably a bit too light. Um, so if we add the shadow as we did before in the um, text shadow, let's put that in black shadow, that should allow the allow the silver font color to um, be more seen. Okay, what's that mate? It's like my rainbow background. So that needs to be larger. Now to make the text larger, font size. Is it font size? Um, so that was 25. Maybe if I change it to pixels, is that going to make any different difference? Yeah, I just didn't have the PX there. All right. And why is it having, why has it got a red shadow? Did I say a red shadow before? Let's check this. Text shadow, red, RGB, so yeah. That's red, actually, sorry, not black. So, if it's all zero, it'd be black, absence of colors. Black, there you go, black shadow. All right. Um, What's up, mates? Like my rainbow background, and we'll finish at that, I think. So, um, I, had, I had a lot of, um, I had a bit of fun um, refreshing my knowledge of CSS, um, HTML, background colors. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. This this last page, it was just using the same um, rainbow gradient we did before. And then we've just added the uh, text to it using another class, silver one. Down here, a paragraph within the. Um, we've actually put the grad one ID of the um, the rainbow gradient in a paragraph. So we've assigned the instead of a div, we did a paragraph, which is fine. Um, made the paragraph ID grade one, the rainbow, right gradient, and also added a class for the text within the paragraph. Okay, now what uh, I want to look at next is having like a, a moving background. So in order to do a moving background, have to have some sort of a loop, wouldn't we? Um, so, uh, yeah, it can definitely be done. Um, I challenge you to do that. So just have a, a moving background on the page. Or even when you click a button, it moves for like five seconds or 10 seconds or so. All right. Okay. Um, maybe that's a project I'll do for another video. And this video has gone a bit longer than I expected, so have a good, have fun with uh, background colors, foreground colors, JavaScript, and CSS. Okay, um, that's all for now. Goodbye.